What's worse than taking credit for someone else's work? Yep, today we are talking about your coworker who happens to be an idea thief and a credit snatcher. In the first half of today's video, we're gonna focus on what to do when it happens in a way that doesn't involve an excessive amount of angst or profanity. Well, at least the profanity is optional. And in the second half of the video, we are going to focus on how to prevent other people from trying to take credit for your work. Of course, to make it as simple as possible for you, my friend, all the timestamps are in the description down below. Hello, my friend. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jennifer Brick and I am your new career bestie. If you haven't already, consider subscribing if you want career advice to help you elevate and accelerate your career on the regular. And just in case you didn't already know this, I post pretty much every single day over on LinkedIn and I'm doing my best to hang out on Instagram. If you wanna follow me there, the links are also in the description bar below. But enough about me. If you are ready to figure out how to stop other people from taking credit for your work, tap that like button and let's jump in. The first thing to do if a coworker is taking credit for your work is to assume good intentions. And I know when this happens, that is about the last thing that your instinct tells you to do. But I promise it is going to serve you much better. The reality is, is that most people are not malicious evil geniuses. They're really not that complicated. In fact, the problem typically lies in the opposite. They're not necessarily the brightest bulb in the bunch, if you know what I'm saying. For example, because our friend, corporate Chad, isn't a very good listener, he doesn't realize he heard something, but he really did hear it. Then he recalls it, not realizing that it wasn't a Chad original, and restates that idea as though it's a bright one that he just had. So he shares it as though it is, his idea. Same thing when he's trying to take credit for work that you did on a project together. Chad doesn't quite realize that because he did some of the things, he didn't necessarily do all of the things. It's a lot for Chad to understand, okay? If your boss or a coworker is taking credit for your work or taking credit for an idea that you contributed, the real problem might be that they misunderstood or misinterpreted the situation. And who knows, it could be a whole subconscious thing that they have going on because they're really a jealous coworker or they're an insecure boss, so they need to take the things that they think are really good and adopt them as their own for their own validation. And I kind of feel bad for them in a way, don't you? That said, that's all speculation. We're not actually diagnosing anyone around here. My point is, is that the simplest solution is typically the right one. And them cluelessly taking credit for your work is a straighter line explanation than them being conniving evil geniuses. So we're gonna start there. And when someone tries to steal credit for your work or for your idea, we are going to to assume that it was an honest mistake that they made. And then we are going to go into the next step, which is to call it out. Not in a public shaming reply all kind of way, at least not yet. And I know that some of you are already cringing at the thought of standing up to someone or potentially having conflict with this coworker or your manager when they are trying to take credit for your idea. However, that's not what we're doing here. This is actually an education moment in disguise. Having a private and discreet conversation where you just draw awareness to the source of the idea origin or all of the work that went into the project that they didn't necessarily do, privately and discreetly draw their attention to the original source of the idea or enlighten them about the full breadth and scope of the work that was done so that they can see that they weren't the ones who did it all and they should be sharing the credit for that work or properly attributing it. At this point, most reasonable people are gonna be kinda embarrassed. They're gonna feel bad that they just did that to you. At their core, most people are nice and they wouldn't knowingly do that to you. And they definitely don't want you to be frustrated by the implications of it. So really, you doing this is doing them a solid. If you don't know what to say, you can say something along the lines of, hey Chad, I don't think that you meant it this way, but it kind of sounded like you were taking credit for solving that big problem on the Acme project, which we worked on together. Most of the time, your coworkers or your boss are going to respond with something along the lines of, oh my gosh, I am so embarrassed, I'm so sorry. I'm going to email Carol and let her know that you were also involved so that you you get credit because it was an accident and they didn't mean to do it. I actually think that this is an accident that a lot of people make in their career. If you've ever made this mistake or witnessed this mistake, let me know in the comments down below. Now, on the other hand, they might not react that way. 
they might get really defensive, especially if they interpret your statement in an accusatory way. But they also might get defensive because they're embarrassed and trying to save face, or they knew exactly what they were doing and they thought they were gonna get away with it. The reason for their defensiveness, quite honestly, is neither here nor there. If they do get defensive, give them a positive label to live up to. You've always been such a great and supportive coworker, and I don't think that it was your intent. I just wanted to let you know how it was perceived. Now, if they wanna argue with you about the work that they did, or over credit for said work, don't. Your perception of the situation is not up to debate and you don't owe them any vindication or letting them off the hook for their own embarrassment or their own ethical conflict that they're feeling when they get angry and defensive. All those things being said, there are going to be instances where you might not feel comfortable calling it out, such as when it's your boss's boss who's taking credit for your idea, or your most toxic coworker that you were avoiding more than the coronavirus, or perhaps you've called them out in the past and it just happened again. At that point, it can be helpful if it's an option to get an assist from an ally or a coworker. And remember, this also means that you are willing to be that ally or friend when someone's trying to take credit for your coworker's work. It's a two-way street. Let's say Chad, the known idea thief, restates your idea that you just pitched in a meeting, but he says it louder and takes credit for it. If you have a colleague you trust, and especially a colleague that is experiencing the same shady behavior from Chad, ask them if they can step in and assist if they notice it. And FYI, I have a whole video coming up about trusting coworkers, so if you want that one, make sure you're subscribed so you see it as soon as it comes out. For many of us, it's so much easier to speak up for someone else than it is to speak up for ourselves. It's also one of those things that can be perceived differently at work. If you're speaking up for yourself and taking credit for your own work and your own ideas, maybe you're being stamped as being selfish or self-centered or something like that. Whereas if you're speaking up for a team member, you're being a good team player. What would this look like in real life? Well, here's an example. You and your coworker Kate have both experienced idea thievery on behalf of Chad. You come to an agreement that when one of you notices it, you are going to call it out. And <laughs> sure, in the very next meeting, Chad goes ahead and takes credit for something that you did. At that point, Kate speaks up. Oh, I just wanted to add, Jennifer was also involved in that project and played a huge role in its success. And Ovs, you would do exactly the same to help Kate out. When Kate's the one who speaks up on your behalf, no one is going to accuse her of being praise-seeking, self-centered, or any of those negative things. In most cases, people are just gonna listen and acknowledge, which sucks for Chad, but is awesome for you. That said, this isn't always going to work and Chad might keep trying to take credit for your work. So what do you do then? You figure out when to let it go and when to escalate. <sighs> a whole bunch goes in here. Now there's no way I'm gonna be able to explain and examine and give solutions for every potential situation here. I will say at the top level that how you proceed is going to be different when it is your boss who keeps on taking credit for your work or taking credit for your ideas versus a coworker doing the same thing. And the most important thing to note here is that not every battle is worth fighting. Ask yourself if that effort or if that idea is going to make a noticeable difference in your career. I've seen people fighting those battles when the answer to those questions was a clear and resounding no, and they ended up just looking really bad and kind of petty about it. That's not what we're going for here. This can be difficult to gauge, especially because you don't know what the impact is going to be. This is when help working with a career success strategist like me can be very helpful. But I wanna share with you a story from my own career that is going to maybe help you make sense of what I just said. The company that I worked for at the time found themselves in a little bit of a legal pickle with a client and a disagreement over scope of work in a contract. And there was some legal action being threatened about something that happened on a project. However, I knew the structure of our statements of work and that the client would have been abundantly outside the scope of work that would have been detailed because their ask was just so out there. So I pointed it out to my boss. He was delighted. He immediately brought it up the ladder to whoever was dealing with the whole kerfuffle. And then he took credit for having this realization. But I told you, I said, he made a bunch of excuses why he wasn't giving me any credit for that idea or that enlightenment, whatever you want to call it. 
and I dropped it immediately. And there's a few reasons why. First of all, it was something that was very obvious. And as soon as it got to our legal team, it was going to be something that was called out and it really wasn't going to be an issue. It just helped to mitigate the stress and the tension before it actually got to that team. But more importantly, this was not going to get me promoted. It wasn't going to impact my performance review. It was not going to impact my pay. What I'm saying is the situation wasn't relevant at all to my potential or how I wanted to stand out at work. And this is why it's so clear to know where your potential and how you should really be standing out is so important. If you don't already know that, go and download my UAQ starter kit. It's gonna help you figure it out. And the third reason why I dropped it was it made my boss look good and my boss looking good made him like me more. From a career strategy perspective, I was building equity that was gonna pay off in the long run. That being said, if it was gonna get me promoted, would have got me a pay increase, would have landed me a big bonus as a thank you for pointing that out, you can bet your bottom dollar that I would have stood up to get credit where credit was due. And that leads me into how to prevent people from taking credit for your work in the first place. You know, stop the credit snatchers before they try. First of all, you you need to know your UAQ, your unique awesomeness quotient. Not only is this going to help you elevate and accelerate your career and who doesn't want that? It also blocks others from taking credit for your work in a few different ways. First of all, when you are known for something, people are literally going to turn to you and ask you for your opinion. There is no confusion about the source attribution there. Next, it leverages your uniqueness and that puts your proverbial fingerprints all over your big contributions. For example, have you ever heard someone say, that's exactly what Jack would have said? Knowing and owning your UAQ is gonna help you cultivate just that. And also when you are clear and focused on your UAQ and someone is taking credit for your work or your contributions, it's going to help you assess if escalating is really going to serve the situation and especially serve you, just like in that situation I just told you about. Now, if you are concerned that one of your coworkers or maybe you're a boss has identified your awesomeness and they want to siphon it for themselves, there's a couple of things that you can do to keep them off your coattails. Which brings me directly into my next tip to prevent people from taking credit for your work and that is to not make the same mistake more than once. Look, I'm all for forgiving people and giving them second chances. However, if Chad has repeatedly taken credit for your work and taken credit for your ideas, and yet you're still telling him those ideas, Chad isn't the problem anymore. You're the problem now. It reminds me of that beautiful quote, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. And if someone has repeatedly taken credit for your work, repeatedly stolen your ideas, it's time for you to take preventative action, which brings us into the next tip to stop people from taking credit for your work. When you are in the presence of a known credit snatcher, you need to keep your ideas shared publicly and your contributions documented in paper or like electronically, you know, some kind of record for the fact that you did what you did. Apply this strategy whenever possible. However, if you're in a situation such as a one-on-one -on -one meeting where you really don't have a lot of people around, in those cases where you have the one-on-one -on -one meeting, send follow-up notes that outline contributions, ideas, and next steps that are being taken. Let's say that your credit stature has developed a tendency of swinging by your desk or into your DMs to get your ideas before a big meeting. In that case, what you can do is you can say to them, hmm, that's really interesting. I'm gonna have to think about that one. Let me get back to you. And then don't get back to them until that team meeting where you share it with everyone or whichever meeting is applicable. I'm sure that there is at least 10. Leave those breadcrumbs whenever possible because if you ever do find yourself in a situation where praise, promotions, and pay are being impacted by someone taking credit for your work and they're getting your promotion. That might be a situation where you choose to escalate and having evidence is going to make your life so much easier. And that brings me to the most important prevention tip. Don't work with assholes. As I said, sometimes the simplest solutions are the right ones. If you're watching this and you're like, okay, I get these tips, but it's not just one person. It's like the whole team. It's the whole company. There is a culture of credit thievery. You need to consider if it's the right place for you. And if it is happening all over the place by everyone, this can actually be a sign that you are in a toxic work environment. And right now, when I just said that, you might've been like, huh, 
that might be it. If that was your reaction, I want you to go and watch this video right now where I dive into the science of a toxic workplace. But before you go, if this video helped you deal with credit thievery at work, prevent credit thievery at work, give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and it makes you my favorite career bestie. As always, thank you so much for watching my friends. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.